Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the C101 CT and we're looking at part of the navigation suite, in this case using VOR DME for radial interception for an IFR approach. We're not taking it all the way down to landing, but we're just looking at getting on the runway radial, which is basically the course of the runway. So if we were going to land on Kutesi 08 here, then we've got to navigate in blind conditions so that we are coming down this radial here to land on the runway there. Our VOR DME, so that's VOR, very high frequency omnidirectional ranging with or without DME, distance measurement equipment, will allow us to get a heading to wherever a VOR station is and a distance. So first of all, I guess we should go over some symbology. This here is a VOR station in the Caucasus. It's that hexagon shape there. If we zoomed in, we can see that it is transmitting on 113.60 megahertz with a Morse identifier of KT. Everything we're looking at today, TACAN, VOR, DME, is all radio-based system with set frequencies. If we went to look at a TACAN station, for instance, I'm sure you're all familiar with TACAN. TACAN is essentially the militarized version of VOR, DME. We've got a channel 44 X-ray here, that is the TACAN sign, with Morse identifier KTS. Just out of interest, we'll quickly jump on a Persian Gulf map now just to look at some more symbology. Here is Persian Gulf, it's a bit more suitable for what we're looking at today and what we can find out is here is our VRR, our hexagon, it does not have DME distance and measurement equipment because it does not have a box around it. This here is VOR DME so it has the VOR sign with the box around it so it has distance measuring equipment as well as the VOR. If I look for a TACAN, there is a TACAM on channel 99 x-ray and we have something interesting down here called a VORTAC. This is a TACAN with VOR so that it can be used for civilian and military use. And we've got a channel here and we've got a VOR frequency there. Now the C101CC version is not fully working in terms of navigation, December 2019. We can hook into a VOR here to get the azimuth. We can hook in here to a VOR with DME to get azimuth, but we can't get the DME part of it, the distance working at the moment. So we can only get azimuth information as it stands. This VOR DME, it's not fully working, so we're not going to show that yet. A TACAN, we can tune into, but we can only get distance information from a pure TACAN like this because we don't have TACAN equipment on our actual aeroplane. In the CC version of the aircraft, we can't actually communicate with this TACAN station here, and therefore we can't get azimuth. We can only get distance. And finally, if we look at the Vortac here, the combined VOR and TACAN, we can get distance and azimuth because it's got the distance part of the TACAN that we can use and the azimuth part of the VOR that we can use. Back to Caucasus, which most of you will have. What we can do is use the VOR here for our azimuth information and the TACAN here, the pure TACAN station, for our distance. So we can do a VOR, AFR approach with those two factors. Interestingly, I think we can also do, if I found another place here, we do a similar thing here with Snarky. We could use this TACAN station here for our distance and we could actually home in on one of these ADF stations, NDBs, which is in the kilohertz range, for our azimuth. So that's another thing we could do, but we're just going to show the combined VOR and TACAN at Kutesi. So the first thing we need to do is get our freaks. We've already got this guy here. It's for VOR, one with 3.60 uh, with KT identifier, and we've got this channel 44 x ray for the TACAN. We need to convert that channel into a megahertz. All this channel here means is it's a certain megahertz. Let me show you this table here, which I will link, and you can see that our station 44 x ray just means 110.70 megahertz. Next, let's look at what we're actually going to do. We're flying here, we're currently flying towards this area here. The idea is we want to use our VOR and our TACAN station along with a horse line to simulate our runway radial to fly to intercept this radial line which is what we can see down here and then basically take us to the runway. Now we're going to do it in VFR conditions but this could be used for zero visibility IFR as well. Next we need to write down the actual course line of the runway and we can there are various ways kneeboard measuring whatever we can just see if we go here that the runway radial is 074 degrees true that's a true course not the same thing as magnetic we next need to look at the magnetic declination in this part of the world in the Caucasus. It is approximately minus 6 degrees. We now need to convert that to a magnetic heading. We take 6 from 74 to get a course of 0, 6, 8 degrees magnetic. Our aircraft works, of course, with magnetic. That's all of the information that we need to do this run. 
in terms of elevation in this particular example that we're looking at today we're not doing elevation or we'll just do a rough elevation from the mileage to the threshold the first thing we need to do is punch in our tacan station into the nav so that we can receive distance information so we're going to go to our nav here we're going to keep it on dme in the master mode and we're going to change with mouse scroll wheel here the frequency 110.70 for the tacan station if we can get there uh, seven zero there now we shift over to here our hsi make sure we're in nav mode and we are and we can see we've now got a distance to that tacan station of zero one six point three so what we can do now is actually change to dme hold and that's going to hold that on a separate channel now and now we can change the nav to our azimuth information which was our vor station which is 113.6 zero if we can get that there and you can also hear a morse identifier for that news station uh, that's morse code to signify the kt call sign you can go and convert that in google to check that you're on the right station but i'm sure it's right note now that we've got some azimuth information here in the hsi we've got this purple needle here which is pointing in this direction which is pretty much east that is taking us to the heading to the airfield well it's not actually to the airfield it's to the VOR station but the VOR station is just off the threshold on the radial so it's essentially taking us there but we can't just go straight there we need to go there on the correct radial intercept that's where our course line is going to come into play next thing let's punch in our course and this is a little bit difficult to do we have to look at this course knob here and mouse scroll wheel at the same time as looking on the HSI and we're setting that to 068, co 068 degrees course there is our magnetic radial set so that is our course line there of 068 radial that is the direct heading to the VOR station that is where we are currently heading this is our course deviation line it is saying that we are currently off left of our current course line and that's shown because this guy here is to the right of the course line what we need to do is to maneuver so that this line here becomes centralized with this main course line pointer here if we can do that then we are on our course and if we then neutralize this course line with the heading pointer here and the heading pointer with the 12 o'clock position so basically that needle that needle and that needle are all in line we will be on the radial for the runway heading in the correct direction that's all of our azimuth sorted out all we need to do then is keep an eye on our speed and our altitude here which we will have zeroed to the runway qfe to come in for an approach in terms of elevation because we're not using ils today all we're going to do is say that 300 feet agl per nautical mile from the threshold is acceptable so for instance when we get out to our approach or fixed point which is not actually shown here it's going to be about there that's 10 nautical miles away from the threshold 10 times 300 is 3000 feet agl let's fly the approach and we'll keep track on the f10 map as well in reality with an ifr or with a hood on we wouldn't be able to see any of this terrain so we're just going to pretend that we can't see any of it we are 15 miles from the TACAM. We are currently heading right essentially of where we want to go because we want to merge with our radial. We want to usually do about a 30 degree interception but today just to expedite we're going to do a, uh, a larger degree about 45 degree interception. You can see the course line is about 45 degrees to the left roughly speaking and what we'll see as we move towards this radial is that this course deviation line is going to start merging with this guy here once that happens we'll take turn a left and we'll try and merge all three needles onto the 12 o'clock position we need to keep an eye on our altitude as well so we're about right at the moment maybe a little bit low and our vsi here so that we merge at 10 miles which is the distance there at about 3,000 feet you can see we're about to merge here with our radial and what we're going to do is a merging turn so we're going to turn before the merge with the radial so that we finish our turn so that all needles are merged at the top here and at the same time our course deviation needle is going to merge with the course line altitude's good speed i'm not going to worry too much because i'm not actually going to be landing today but Let's level out there because i'm not quite happy that we're on radial yet we're at 10 miles and we're at 3200 feet so we're on track vsi is looking pretty good anywhere between 500 and 1000 feet per minute we should be okay okay i'm going to just finish off my turn now i'm a little high i'm nine miles and three thousand feet so i'm just gonna 
increase my sync rate a little more. Okay, uh, I think we'll stop there at that point. What I can show you is that our course deviation line is pretty much centralized with our course line showing that we are on the radial and heading in the correct direction because it is merged with the purple heading pointer and that's all merged with the 12 o'clock position. So what we can see is that we've ignored that. That's just a waypoint I've put in. We are actually heading in that direction there and we're perfectly on the radio in fact we're slightly skewed but we will continue and hopefully sort that out let's unpause and continue keep everything perfectly in line watch our altitude we're now eight miles so we want to be 200 and 2400 feet we're still slightly off the course so we're just going to head right just a bit what we can see is that our course line is still slightly right so we're going to turn uh sorry our course deviation pointer uh, line is right so i'm going to just do a little bit of a right correction there. Can't see the runway yet, but it will appear at some point. Okay, that's bang on. So what we can do is we've got all those needles now perfectly centralised now. Look, we're five thousand, we're five miles, so we should be at fifteen hundred feet. We're a little bit high. Okay, so we're increasing the sink rate a little. Still can't see. The, ah, there's the runway. Look, it's just appearing at the top of the screen now, and you can see how accurately, without seeing that runway, we're going to hit that runway. Right, so I'm going to ignore the runway just follow the needles. The needle was saying that we're ever so slightly uh, off to the right now. In fact, I can see the VOR station now. That there, that there is an NDB, that there is a VOR station. It's like a big kind of circle of uh, transmitters. Not sure exactly how it works. We've come too high. I'm not too worried about that because that's not really part of the video. But So two miles, there should be about 600 feet. I'm actually 900. Mm -hmm. And I've slipped slightly left, so I've got to correct right. And stop. And you can see all of a sudden the deviation pointer and everything, the heading needle suddenly span around. And that's because we've actually gone over the top of our VOR station, uh, which was down there. But what it did is it got us onto a perfect final pretty much to the runway and at this point i would be seeing the actual runway lights and i'll be going in vfr the beauty about the navigation system in, in this is that there are different ways that we can do this different types of transmitters that we can talk to and we've even got a flight director that we'll go through in another video but that's the basics i hope that was useful and see you later